Hi kids, this is your favorite math teacher. Just took the elevator to get here. Today's lesson is chapter one, lesson four, and I'm talking about ratio tables today. Uh, to get started, I'm gonna talk about uh, what many of you have probably done before, and that's make orange juice. Uh, so to make orange juice, I'm gonna say that an OJ recipe, if you buy orange juice in a can, uh, most of the time you're gonna have a recipe that's something like this. One can of OJ, I'm just gonna sh show that with an orange dot. So you dump the OJ into a container and then you need three cans of water. Okay, that would make your recipe, make the OJ taste good. Not too orangey and not weak. Well, if you wanted to double that recipe, another can of OJ, three more cans of water. If I wanted to make an even bigger recipe. I had a huge container to put it in. You can probably tell what's going to happen. Another can of OJ and I would need three more waters. Okay, each of those would taste the same. If I made that batch and then I doubled it, it would taste exactly the same. If I tripled it, it would taste exactly the same those ratios would be equal. I can show that recipe in a ratio table. It would look like this. I could have OJ there and water here, and I could say one can of OJ, three cans of water, two cans of OJ. I would need six cans of water, three, and nine. So I could represent the same thing in a ratio table. And I could keep that ratio table going. The next batch would be four cans of OJ and 12 waters. So this is a ratio table. It's a, a table of ratios that are equal. Okay, next example. Uh, many of you have probably seen on uh, the 4th of July, there's a famous hot dog eating contest. Joey Chestnut is the world champion. And the next problem we're going to look at is Joey ate. By the way, I should have said this at the beginning, but you should be taking notes on this. Whenever you see the Cornell note format, you are going to need either your Cornell note page or your comp book, and you're following, you're writing what you see here. Uh, back to our example, Joey ate 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. Okay, this is actually his record. Uh, he ate 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. How many, I'm going to abbreviate hot dogs, how many hot dogs did he eat in two minutes? The contest, he ate 66 total hot dogs in 12 minutes. How many did he eat in two minutes if he ate at a constant rate? I'm going to make a ratio table. Hot dogs and time. So you make the same table in your notes. Okay, and the ratio that we know from the start is he ate 66 hot dogs in 
12 minutes. What we're trying to find is how many hot dogs did he eat in two minutes. So, it also gives us another place to uh, reduce these numbers. The big idea today is if you multiply or divide by the same number, the ratio is going to stay equal. So, if I started with 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes, Maybe we could divide both of these by 2. Okay, I notice that two, 2 goes into 66 and 2 goes into 12. And that's an easy number to work with for half, right? Dividing by 2 is the same thing as what's half of that number. What's half of 66? 33. What is half of 12? 6. So the huge idea on today's lesson and on today's practice is this right here. You've got to be dividing by the same number or multiplying by the same number. And I did. That means this ratio is equivalent to that ratio. Well, now that I've got 33 hot dogs in 6 minutes, I can make another scale down going from 6 to 2. How did I go from 6 to 2? What happened right there? We divided by 3. So I need to divide this number by 3. We're dividing this by 3. We have to divide that by 3. What's 33 divided by 3 is 11. Like I said, Dividing by the same number or multiplying by the same number is the key. This is, you should be showing this today on your work, okay? What are you dividing by or what are you multiplying by? It has to be the same. That keeps the ratios equivalent. So the answer is, if Joey ate at a constant rate, he would have eaten 11 hot dogs in two minutes or every two minutes he ate 11 hot dogs. Pretty crazy. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is this word called scaling. If you have a ratio, if you have a ratio, you can scale back Okay, what's called scale back? Scaling back means the numbers are getting smaller. You're scaling it back. That means you are going to be dividing by the same number. Okay. And I put divide by number, divide by number, meaning that those have to be the same. And I'll highlight those the same color to show that these got to be the same. If you divide by the same number and you divide by the same number, you are scaling the ratio back and it's going to stay equal. You can also scale forward. That means you are multiplying by the same number. So I'm going to put times a number, times a number, and I'm going to highlight, make them the same color to show that they must be the same. So you can scale a ratio forward times 5 times 5. It's going to be the same. Times 3 times 3. Uh, let me jump back to this one real quick. I just thought of something to add. You might have noticed that you could have gone from this number right to this in one move. Okay? And you can, as long as you're showing what you're doing. To do that in one move, you might have noticed that you could have divided 12 by 6 to get to that. So I could have shown my work like that. Divide by 6. That means I would have had to divide this by 6. And 
I would have got the same thing. I would have, if 66 divided by 6 would have been 11, 12 divided by 6 would have been 2. So there's not, there are many problems, there's more than one way to show your work. I could have divided by 2, divided by 3, or I could have just done 1, divide by 6. But again, I'd want to show what I'm doing. This is the showing the work part that I am going to be checking tomorrow. Sometimes you need to scale back and scale forward in the same problem. Here's an example of that. Let's say you go to the store and you've got cans, uh, cans of corn, and they are on sale at the store. You get 10 cans. You get 10 cans for $4. How much How much for 15 cans? Question. I'm going to make another ratio table. This one I'm going to say cans uh, of corn. I'm going to abbreviate. And here I'm going to say money. My ta ratio table is going to look like this. My starting ratio is 10 cans for $4. 10 cans, $4. And I'm trying to find out how much is it going to cost for 15 cans. I'm going to put 15 right there. I look at this table, and in this example, I don't see how to go from 10 to get to 15. Uh, there is a number that does it. Um, if you know that number, you could r scale up right away and do it with that same number. Four times that same number would tell you how much 15 cans are. Uh, but I'm going to use a combination of scale back and scale forward. I'm looking at 10 and 4 and thinking out loud that I can cut both of these in half. If I cut that in half, I'd get 5. If I cut that in half, I would get 2. Well, if this number was 5, could I get to 15? You bet I could, times 3. That's what I'm going to show right now. I am going to scale this ratio back. I'm going to divide it by 2. And I'm going to divide this by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And I'm going to highlight showing my work. I'm dividing by the same number. I'm dividing by the same number. Next, I'm going to scale forward. So I scaled back, and now I'm going to scale forward to solve it. How do I go from 5 to get to 15? Times 3. Times 3. Again, the huge idea for today is you have to multiply or divide by the same number that keeps it equal times 3, times 3, and now I can just look and see. 5 times 3 is 15, 2 times 3 is 6. So how much would it cost for 15 cans? I'm going to answer the question over here. $6 for 15 cans. Right there. Uh, this lesson, again, uh, ratio tables. Um, big idea, you have to be multiplying or dividing by the same number to keep the ratio equal. And you can both scale it back, make the ratio smaller, and scale it forward. Uh, if you run into a number where you scale it back and then you can't, if you make a mistake, back up and try another number. I hope that helps. Uh, you'll get your uh, assignment practice problems in class. Until next time.